Hello everyone and welcome to Airships Conquer the Skies. It's a game quite like From the Depths or Cosmeteer, in which you design vehicles, be that an airship, a land ship, or a defensive building, and you fight your enemies. There's a bit of a campaign mode in there and we will be taking a look at that. It's called Conquest Mode and we'll be starting a new game. And we'll be creating a grand empire and I think we will be the empire of Derpington. You can design your own crest, you know, your own coat of arms. There are some things that are purely cosmetical, like for example how your crest looks, but the icon of your crest, which I think I would like to keep in red, there we go. You can select it from over here and that does have certain bonuses, for example, if you go with an anvil, less steel armor cost. And there's just a bunch of bonuses like that. You can pause, you can read, some of them give you extra technology to start with. Some of them don't have a bonus at all. So you can pick and mix to your liking there. We're going to go with the eagle because I like my cannons to be accurate. I like using cannons. So there we go. We will be the Empire of Derbington. And this will be our flag. We'll leave that. We'll have a look at the options here. We'll go with a large map size. Medium difficulty. You can kind of choose how the map's going to look like. If you want to have one big continent. Or you want to have like an island group. A mix of both. You can have monsters on the map, we'll take a look at that later. Research, starting technology, that's all good. Let's go! The Empire of Derpington. Kind of a shame that the music cut out, but... That'll be back in just a second. Early generating the map. It's a large map, We'd, I don't know how far we're going to get in this let's... You know, call it a let's try. Not necessarily a let's play, depends on whether people want to see more or not. But I'll definitely upload a few episodes at least. I was given a code for this. Which is the thing you should disclose now, apparently. Anyway, Derbington is your home city. Cities that are yours have your flag. Each city you conquer gives you additional income, but must also be defended. This is your starting fleet. Click on it, and you can see the ships in it in a panel to the right. We've got ourselves this beautiful ship over here. The Imposition. You can click on individual ships to select or deselect them before you give commands. If there's a yellow board around it, you'll have it selected. If there isn't, then you don't have it selected. Of course, you need to have at least one ship selected to move the fleet. Alright, to build up your fleet, you may want to construct another airship. Click on your home city, then choose build ship. Select the ship within your budget, name it, and click OK. Construction will begin, and once complete, your new ship will join the fleet. We'll take a look at that in a minute. For now, there's speed controls up here, that's good. As time passes, you will earn money. Money can be used for can be exchanged for goods and services. That's all great. Now it's telling us to go look for a conquest. We'll go do that in a bit. At first we're gonna take a look at the shining research tab over here. We started with the tier zero technologies available to us, which is all well and good. So we have basic cannons, propellers, suspendium chambers, which is like an engine that keeps you afloat basically. It, it's technology stuff. It makes airships float. It's good. I like it. There's a bunch of choices that we can do now. We can go get an Imperial Cannon of Medium Steel Armor. We can get wooden armor. Or better wooden armor, rather. We can get fire extinguishers or rockets or harpooners. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the fire extinguishers because that sounds good. You know, it's not an Imperial Cannon, but it's safe. It's good. We'll get more into that later. And let's go and build ourselves a ship now, I suppose. There's a whole list of things that are pre-created. You can see a little picture down below over there. This one has a flag on it, look at that. But yes, there's pre-built ones, but we're going to go and design ourselves a ship, because why not? That's a lot more fun. And the most important thing to build are weapons. We have a whole bunch of weapons over here. We've got a bomb bay. We can drop bombs on the enemy. They even work on enemy airships. You can have basic cannons, which I think we will for now. We'll have like two cannons or something. You don't have a button to rotate stuff, so you have to like select the flip version if you want to fire like the other way. You can also add rams to ram the enemy with, including a giant imperial fist. Got grape shot cannons, which are better at taking out crew and stuff. Grenades. 
muskets, which are pretty useful to have, not gonna lie. We'll probably have one, like, over here and over there. Now, they don't have access to the rest of the ship, indicated by these... This, yeah, this white line is, like, the main part of a ship that can be accessed. The red line cannot be reached, so that's a bit of a problem. Uh, we're gonna go... Not command and crew, but structural, I think? No. Basic. There's, there's a corridor with a ladder here. There we go. We've basically built a ladder behind there, and now they can walk up to the different decks. And they can get stuff. They can bring stuff there, which is all great. What we're gonna do next is probably go to resources. There's a lot of stuff in here. I'm trying to keep the list small. But there's things like ammo! Ammo is good so that we can fire our guns. We'll add like two ammo stores so that we have plenty of bullets. And then later we'll have to add a coal store somewhere. We'll add a fire point over here so that if things catch on fire, we're close by enough that we can put out the ammo before it detonates. At least that's my thinking. I'd rather not have my bullets on fire. That seems like a great idea. Now of course, any ship needs a crew. And any crew needs to be commanded. So we're going to add a command bridge in here. And I'll have a few people working there, and they will generate command points, which we can use to order our ships around in battle. We'll also add some quarters, so that people can sleep. And you know what? We'll add a second quarter, so that we have plenty of crew on board. Since we're not done building the ship yet. You can also add things like berth, which are tiny 1x1 one one blocks. We could have those instead of the corridor ladder, actually. People can sleep in there. The weight's a bit more... Hit points is a bit more, but you know, larger ships are all about making do. If we add some berths in here, and people can sleep there. And we can actually get rid of that second quarter, because we'll have, you know, a bit more space taken up. But th there was going to be ladders there anyway, we might as well put a berth there, right? And later on we can replace that with other things. But for now we'll just keep a berth over there, that'll be fine. We can add things like a sick bay, which will heal people that get injured in combat, although for our starting design I think we will skip on that. What we really need is to start adding a coal store right now. Coal is needed to power suspendium chambers and propellers! It's also quite flammable, so that's going to be a problem. What we're going to do is we're going to add a crystal over here, and that is our suspendium chamber. That basically generates a lift for us so that we can stay in the air. Alternatively, if you look on the lift, we can find a large suspendium dust tank. Now that's flammable. Really flammable. But it does look pretty. And it's also a tinier version. But I kinda... I kinda like that, actually. Let's see... Don't really need a small suspendium chamber, so that leaves us with propulsion. We need more propulsion, and we need more supply hatches. We'll take a look at propulsion first. We can put an engine pile on the bottom. It's not the worst. We can also put a propeller in the back. We could put it, like, behind the, um, the coal room over there, because the engine is going to need coal. And so does the suspendium chamber. So if we both keep that close there, and we've got the am ammunition close to the guns over here, then we're pretty good. This is a nice, decent craft. It's not very... Actually, it is very expensive. Jesus. Why is it... Why does it cost... It, it costs 900 already. That's a bit expensive. But... It's gonna be a good ship. Hopefully. Anyway, um... Do we add a second propeller up here? I kinda want to. There we go. It's gonna be a lot more expensive. But it is a nice little ship, isn't it? It is a quite nice little ship. It's gonna go fast as well, it's gonna do 101 knots per hour. Or miles per hour, uh, kilometers per hour? I think kilometers per hour, but I'm not sure. Anyway, that leaves us with one more thing. Supply. We need to, you know, be able to bring on food and stuff. So we're gonna be in, we're gonna put in like a supply hatch over here. It, apparently it's not able to reach anywhere, so we're gonna put a, uh, corridor with a ladder over here, and that's gonna fix that. However, now our ship looks a little weird, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some shapes and decorations. Probably add, like, 
A little bit of wood over there. We could add a figurehead. That would look pr quite pretty. We can see the outside view somewhere, I think. Ooh, we can see overlays like explosion damage. Yeah, that's gonna take out the entire ship, basically. Let's not hope that happens. Uh, yeah, we could add like a figurehead. It does actually go over the armor there, which is quite pretty. So we could have a Kraken on there. We could have a... Mm, it doesn't quite... It doesn't quite work for what I have in mind. An eagle, though. Yeah, I kind of like that. There we go. Our beautiful warship. It's going to be made of wood, I think, because wood is light. We could put on a steel wall. I don't recommend it. It's going to make this thing heavy. Although I say that. The more I make it out of steel wall, the more the weight actually goes down and so it can actually float higher because it's made of... it doesn't make a lot of sense. You know what? We're gonna go with the steel wall. It has like 8 HP less than the wooden armor, but it's less heavy, and it absorbs a lot more damage. At least blast damage. So we're gonna have this monstrosity flying around. You know what? We'll name it the Ziggurat, why not? We could paint our ship as well. We're gonna add something like this. Let's see, that's one, two, three, four blocks. That's four blocks. We're not going to paint the balloon. That would be silly. We'll have like the middle of our craft here. We could add on a decoration. A small coat of arms. An ornate coat of arms. But that's not quite centered and that's going to bug me forever. You know, I think that works pretty well. I think that's a pretty interesting craft we just made up. Could add some gold leaf over there. Beautiful. Yeah, we're gonna save that design as a ziggurat. Why not? And then we'll leave. It's time to scout for your first conquest. We're gonna wait. I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit. The AI will declare war on each other. And when I say declare war on each other, they're gonna go fly around. And they're gonna start fighting and conquering and stuff. We're in a pretty bad spot, actually. We're always going to be in the middle of like this, that. And that. Ow, that kind of hurts. That's gonna hurt a lot. We're gonna have to take out up here first, I think. Yeah. That's what you get. It's a pretty large map. There's a lot of cool things on there as well. Like, for example, there's clockwork, clockwork wasps over here. There's dragons! Hell, you could have one of the starting coat of arms. Like, the little icon. You could literally make dragon riders. It's very expensive though, so I'm not sure if I'm really a fan. We're gonna go build ourselves a ziggurat. Yeah, and when that's done, we're gonna go to war. Speed it up a bit, in fact. So I would like to go to war now. We'll put on our war face. Okay, let's get our fleet. We'll send the imposition as well. And the ziggurat. Look at that. That looks good, doesn't it? I like it. Let's go invade Dine. It's time to scout for your first conquest. Send a spy to this nearby city by clicking on it and choosing send spy. After a bit of time spent insinuating himself, the spy will start relaying information about the city. There we go, we can look around in that city. Each city with a giant coat of arms like this, or like Derpington over here, that's a capital city. That's, ha that's gonna have a shipyard. Not every place is gonna have a shipyard. Most will just have defenses and stuff. So it's really about capturing the giant capital cities in order to expand like your production stuff. Apparently Dine did not have any defenses, so we have an uncontested victory. Now we can choose what to do with the place. We can take a while, which means we can't build any defenses there. But we will take, you know, most of that 24 income. We can do a brutal takeover. We can crush it a lot faster, but, you know, we won't have all the income. It's going to get ravaged a little. Or we can pillage it. Get a large one-off sum of money. And then, you know, have to spend a lot of time repairing the place. We're going to go do a gentle takeover. And I'm going to split off the ziggurat over here. 
We're gonna play Deep Castle. Another uncontested victory. We'll do another gentle takeover. And there we go. Now they're sending an airship from over here to go over there. You can check their path by hovering over them. Dotted line does not go to dine, so we don't really care. You know, let them go. Let them fight. Well, I just noticed that they took over these guys as capital, so a kit might actually be a good place to hit now. A spy is active. We can see they have a huge shipyard. Wow. Okay, that's that's good to know. Your spy is now set up and is reporting from Sedin. The following information has become available. The income it produces and the size of its shipyard, which determines how quickly it can build new ships. Finally, the level of its secret police, which determines how susceptible it is to bribery and sabotage. If you click on the city, you can now choose View City, which lets you see its defenses and its garrison. Using spies, you can determine what kind of fleet you need to conquer a city. Once fleet's ready, invade it. Alright, so let's have a look at the city then. They've got giant towers, mostly rifles in here, so they don't do a lot against steel. But they have little tiny craft that they can use to intercept us. These are basically tiny fighter craft hangers. But we can pay money to have our spies sabotage them. For example, we can blow that up. Oops. A blaze set by your agent destroys the vigilant rampart. I am so sorry. But I'm really not sorry. You know. Anyway, that's that. That's our tutorial done, pretty much. It tells you all the basics that you need to know. You can check the Empire details here, where you can see your secret police, how much you're spending on your spy network and other stuff. That's all useful. You will, funnily enough, see the flags of people that you conquer added onto here as your empire grows, which I think is pretty cool. For example, we've taken you know, some of their land. I think that's gonna that's it's gonna show up there eventually. It's fine. For now, though, we're going to have to quickly complete our gentle takeovers here. Because we have some stuff to conquer. I don't want to fly out of a gentle takeover. Because there's no defense there, so they're easily able to revolt. You know, they're going to go away from us, because we're not defending them. Which is a bit unfortunate. Oh, there, there we go. We've researched fire safety. We can now build fire extinguishers. I think I'm gonna go. Kind of want to say Imperial Cannon and Medium Steel Armor because I like armor. It means we don't die. I'm gonna bump up our research budget a little bit, which means that we research stuff faster. That is gonna be how we win this game. City has no defensive buildings. Yep. There's absolutely nothing. We can design a building, we can build a building. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna build. A tiny sentinel. It's only got two tiny guns, two tiny rifles. They do five piercing damage, which is barely going to hurt any craft. But it's a useful basic defense to make sure that this the little tiny town won't leave us. There we go. I'm going to send the imposition to attack a kip, because we know that just got taken over, so nobody's over there. And we'll go to here and we'll design... You know, we'll just build another Sentinel. It doesn't have to be the world's most defended place. We'll try and use our fleets to defend it instead. But now we are at a kip and they do have some defenses because we have a battle coming up. It's going to be our first battle. Alright. We've got our imposition over here. It's uh, in position. It's a bomber craft as well by the look of things. It's got three bomb bays. So that's going to be fun. And then we have a little Doom Bunker over here with a skull on it. It has two rifles to defend itself. So this is one. We've basically got ourselves a free city. You can see little map conditions over here. Fog. So they're going to be a bit harder to hit because they're hiding in a fog bank. That's pretty much it. This square means we can deploy here and they deploy there. Let's go. And now that we're in battle... We can see all the arcs on our weapons here. No targets are currently available because they're not flying over the enemy. We've got a whole bunch of commands here. This is movement. It's going to be the most useful. 
We're just gonna park over there, to be honest. We're just gonna fly up. We can do things like ram them, set the ship on the ground, transfer crew, boarding actions, have the crew focus on things like firefighting or repairing, and we can set gunnery options. We're gonna fly high and we're gonna tell them to aim their bombs well. There we go. We're now slowly dropping bombs on them. It's quite magnificent. They can shoot up because the rifle has a really good arc. That's why you'll generally find the rifle on many defensive buildings. It's really cheap and it gives you some defense. But really, when we are dropping bombs from all the way up there and we are made out of... Check the outside view. I think we're made of steel. That might be steel wall. And it's beautiful. I love it. We could just drop bombs on you with impunity. The only concern I have is that we only have 24 ammo. Whereas the ziggurat that we designed earlier, that's gonna have 200. But there we go. We destroyed all the crew quarters. So, we win. You can also win by grounding the enemy ship, if you're fighting a ship. Or you can have them surrender. Sometimes they'll get away, sometimes they won't. Ekip's got a large shipyard. We're gonna go do a brutal takeover so that we can start moving again. How about you? You still have those, which is going to be annoying. Really annoying, in fact. But we do have a couple of muskets, so that's gonna be helpful against those. Uh, we'll go and... We can't build here yet because we're still doing the takeover, so we're gonna go back to Durpington and we're gonna go build ourselves another ziggurat. Build me one more, please. They're a bit expensive, but hey. It helps. And now that we've taken over some stuff, we're gonna bump up the secret police, because otherwise, you'll immediately start seeing the AI going, Oh, that's cool. And... They're gonna, like, sabotage stuff, like we did. They're gonna make stuff disappear, and it's not gonna be fun. Now we're gonna go and build a building. We'll plop down another sentinel, even though this is a more important city to defend. We'll place proper defenses later. Yeah, 42, 42 income is going to be really good. These guys also have defenses, so they have another little rifle bunker. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to fly up here and bomb them again, because we don't have a bomb bay on here. We have cannons instead. There we go. Go to the outside view. There is a effect, which means that Shots fired from left to right are less accurate, so the sun is like over here, and our gunners will have the sun in their eyes, which is going to be annoying. But we'll move over here and then we'll flip by hitting F, so that we're now looking that way, we're looking west. So we'll be attacking with the sun in our back, and that will make it more likely for us to hit, and less likely for the enemy to hit. And they can shoot us with one rifle, so I'm pretty confident in just hovering here and peppering them with cannon fire. There we go, some shots are flying, our musket is trying to fire, but now you can see. Musket has a slightly worse arc than the rifle, but the musket's more powerful, which is why I like to go for the musket instead. And now we are flying behind them, with cannons, and we're giving them the bad news. We're just gonna set this on higher speed. This is gonna be an easy victory. There we go, we've destroyed the rifle. They can no longer fire. There we go, this is an easy victory. They surrendered. Sometimes when you surrender, your ships will be able to get away. Usually when you're the attacker, but if this if the defender surrenders or surrenders, we basically get this fortress. Because we haven't completely destroyed it. Sure, it's damaged, but we can repair that. And there we go, we now have Wombaton. We'll do a brutal takeover. And we'll have a look at this city again. We should be able to fly at a distance. Oh, they're building a ship. We can actually see what the ship looks like. It's gonna have some rifle... Uh, it's actually kinda look like muskets. They're gonna have muskets. And a lot of repair things, I think. Which is weird. But yeah, that's going to be done before we get our ziggurat. 
Oh, this fleet's moving to invade one of your cities. Make sure it's well defended. To strengthen it, move your fleets there or build additional defensive buildings. We're not going to be able to build anything there, so we're going to try to move the ziggurat back and see if it gets there in time. It doesn't. So we can see their ship now, and it's not... Okay, it's not a defensive thing. It's a little carrier, actually. And they also have an eagle. Gosh darn it, they're going to have to die now. Unfortunately, our little sentinel here. It's got the rifles. So it's a lot better... You know, the arc's better. Because it can shoot stuff... Way up. Like, directly up and a little bit further, even. But yeah. Here come those little... Little planes. Yeah, they're, they're tearing us apart, really. We are killing some of the tiny ships, but that really doesn't make a difference if we can't take out the carrier. They'll get more tiny ships. Darn it. Yeah, you see, they'll, they'll go back to the carrier to repair and stuff, which is really cool. There we go. We lost. Unfortunately, they disarmed the Sentinel. But, now our ship gets there. And we can see how well the Ziggurat is going to do against their little carrier. Uh, I think my strategy is going to be to... Flip it and reverse it. Our muskets will be able to fire on the enemy, like, planes. And we'll try to use the fact that it's dawn to blow them to bits and I would also like to fly backwards so that we can keep shooting the little ships if we can kill them they won't respawn in the battle but if we like let them go and get repaired they will be back and I'm also keeping out of the arc of their weapons so they can't shoot us there we go another tiny ships down we currently have the mobility advantage over them which is good Uh, we're almost at the map edge, and that's going to be a slight problem. But we've killed all their tiny ships. And inside their balloons, they're hiding little... Suspendium chambers, I think. So if we can focus on those armored balloons... We should be able to take them down. There we go. The battle is going well, at least. That's good. Uh, try to not ram them, please. Oh, they're going in for the boop. Oh, we're getting booped quite hard here. There we go. Disengage. I want to shoot them. Currently, they're getting shots into us, and we're not getting shots into them, and I don't like it. Oh, they've set a balloon on fire. That's... Ouch. That is a problem. Uh, really? Oh man, our ammunition has made, that's a shame. Apparently, they survived, which is really annoying. See, so, yeah, that's our ship gone. God. But we have another one, and they're probably not done repairing yet. We can win the fight. But actually, it's probably better to regroup first. We'll go in with more friends. We can bomb them. You know, that'll help. I want vengeance for the ziggurat. And then we'll take out their capital. Right, let's get them. They're still not repaired. There we go. You need to be able to fly back to a shipyard and actually hit the repair button when you have stuff blown up. So they have no surface ceiling. Which means they're not going to be able to fly very well. And we do. We're going to order both of these to fly over there. So you to move over there. You're going to move like that. Again, we're going to try to have the imposition stay above them. So we can drop bombs on them. The ziggurat over here has drawn the attention of their carrier craft, which is good. Because we can destroy them. Well, you will just float here with impunity and drop bombs on them. Because everyone knows that dropping bombs on planes works like a charm. There we go. We will take 
vengeance for our fallen comrades. Well, with a bit of luck, we can disable the ship without destroying it and capture it. And then we too will have the technology of tiny skycraft. Okay, that's... That's a tiny bit of an issue. I'm gonna have to redesign the ziggurat, I think. It's giving me a bad feeling. Uh, we're gonna take you out now. Actually, we might have to withdraw. Yeah, I'm gonna flee. Ziggurat surrendered. Unbending is immobile, so that gets destroyed, I think. And now we need a destination to fly, so we're gonna go fly home. Man. I didn't quite realize how devast. Oh, Ziggurat's gone. Great. Well, we don't have to repair it, but it's kind of gone now. I'm going to quickly open up the design and make a little bit of an adjustment, because, well... That didn't go as well as I liked it to. Uh, let's go to lift, because I want to change up the... Design just a bit. Disconnect it in several parts. Indeed it is! I'm gonna go maybe a cord over the ladder. What we're basically gonna do is we're gonna add in a cord over there. Uh, we can actually have a look at the um, the resources now because we did unlock the fire extinguisher. That's kind of like a a corridor with a cord with a ladder, except it also has a little fire extinguisher. But this should keep us away from the explosive damage. Just a bit, maybe. So hopefully the balloon explosion won't blow up our ammunition anymore. That seems like a really bad design. I'm not sure why. There we go. We live and we learn. Except for the crew of those two ziggurats. They kind of died. But that has it been it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and perhaps a comment down below as well. It really helps when I haven't uploaded much lately and new series and all that. And I would really appreciate it. And hey, if you like this, why not hit the subscribe button and the little bell. Because there will be more airships on the channel. This is a fun game. I'm going to be playing some more of it. Thank you all for watching. Until next time. Have a good one, folks.